So you dealt with some personal demons when you were a young player in Philadelphia, and and uh, we were talking about Belichick. And I said mm-hmm. earlier, domestic violence is my non-starter. Mm-hmm. But I'm 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 not a father figure. I I I got 55 guys in the locker room. I could have seven with anger issues, 12 smoke too much weed, four functioning alcoholics, and I could have two or three with a criminal background. But to me. I'm going to look at productivity with domestic violence being the non-starter. That, I'm not drafting Mm -hmm. you. That, you're gone. But where do you fall on a Michael Floyd for the Patriots? Like, like, where is the right spot to land? What is a second chance that is redeemable that you would provide? Well, a lot of that in a situation like this, number one is he needs some type of help. Yes. I mean, he needs some type of counseling. He needs to be involved in some type of program. Um, because it's obvious he has a problem with alcohol. Right. Um, I'm not going to say um, he's an alcoholic or he's a drunk or anything like that, but he has a problem with how he responds when alcohol's in the system. Right. So, which leads to, based on a bunch of information that I've read and been through personally myself, it's best for him not to be drinking. Um, if someone has a situation like this, they're better off for success, it's been proven, if they have steady employment. If they have a regular schedule. Yes. You yes. know, so they're able to provide for their family. So for me, um, man, this was a ridiculous situation that Michael put himself in. Right. Um, being sleep at the wheel, given all modern technology, the resources he has at his disposal um, to be able to get transportation, to be able to put, you know, other citizens in arm's way. This is a severe offense. So to me, I'm more concerned about the help. You know, how are we going to help him? Now, New England's saying they didn't know all the information. Now, that's hard for me to believe. I mean, that's just hard, hard, hard for me to believe. Now, other organizations, this would have gone on. We'd have been like, yeah, we expect that, or we might criticize them. They're a bad organization. But a great organization says, we didn't didn't know that. That, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think he can get the necessary help. Um, that he needs in New England, but the NFL and their players' assistance program, you know, they have to throw their hands around him because he needs love, and love doesn't necessarily mean letting him play. You know, it's it's interesting you talk about – I was talking about Aaron Hernandez earlier, and people say, well, he was a psychopath. And I said, well, we found out O.J. had some issues, and he was the spokesman for corporate America for 30 years. I mean, you were in the locker rooms – can guys hide stuff? How much can you hide? You can't hide crazy, man. Like, you know crazy when you see it. Yeah, yeah, I had a crazy neighbor once. Okay, like, you, you know crazy. Now, to the extreme that we have seen guys do things, now, you might know a guy's crazy on a scale of 1 to 10, his crazy like an 8, because we've, we've encountered a lot of crazy people based on environment. We grew up into being in locker rooms. But there's still some things startling. Now, I'm going to take a guy, bring him into the conversation, Ray Rice. This is a person I never would suspect, given the crazy, because he's not crazy, um, that he would be able to do something like that. So life sometimes puts you into a situation and you say, wow, man, this guy, he wouldn't do it, but what he did, you know, the judgment is going to fall on him. So you have to be careful of what you think you can fix, all right? And you can't fix everyone. And everyone really, they don't want help. Uh, Michael Floyd, I'm concerned about his reaction to the police officers and the Bidwells because this is a family that they help the players on and off the field. I personally know this, okay? They go out of their way. Tyron Matthews is a great example. They go out of their way to get their players what they need. Larry Fitzgerald has been there his whole career, so I know a lot about the organization. He showed no type of remorse. He could have he stayed in Arizona, but the ownership wasn't happy with his response to them in the interview with him the next morning. So that I'm concerned about because unless he changes that, regardless of what Belichick and them do, regardless of what kind of environment they have, he is still his, he hasn't hit the bottom. See, he should have hit the bottom when he was asleep at the wheel. That should be the rock bottom as far as um, his house is concerned. Now, if, if he right. gets some help, decides to give up drinking, and just build it up from there. But if you don't, oh, there's some more floor, floors that you can fall. Do, do you remember, if I could, do you remember, did you hit a bottom? Do you remember that? 
I got cut by Buddy Ryan. That was that was it for me. Okay. Employment. And, you were... and, and my wife at the time was pregnant with my only son, and I was wondering what kind of dad, what kind of fool is going to lose his job. I just bought a house, and now I can't provide for him. So you had real guilt. Oh, man, absolutely. So the Vikings, they intervened, and they told it, They told me, they made it known that my recovery was more important than my ability on the field. And then once I started that, September 21st, 1990, I stopped drinking. I could just see my ability and all the other things just started to come together. And you rewarded them for their, oh, for their trust in you. I did the best I could do. Uh, pretty good. Did the, did the best I could nice do. Numbers. I don't have no podcast or nothing like that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. 